Okay, in this problem we've got a table, but we've got actually two tables. One table here, and another table here. And on this table, we have a mass connected to a pulley. And on this table, we also have a mass connected to a pulley on this side. But interestingly, they're both connected to a big mass in the middle of the two tables. And the m let's call this A, let's call this B, and let's call this C. Now, because they're separate ropes, this is going to have tension 1, and this is going to have tension 2. So they're definitely going to be different tensions because they're not the same rope. However, to make things more interesting, we're going to say this is 0 0.2 coefficient of friction, kinetic, that is, okay? And this is uh, 0 0.3. Now, let's say mass A is equal to 2.5 kilograms. And let's say mass B is equal to uh, 3.5 kilograms. And mass C is equal to 6 kilograms. OK, so what we need to do is we need to find T1 and T2. Once again, the method of approach is to find the acceleration. Okay. Now, one thing that I will say, in, if some of you guys are astute here and kind of really thinking about this in your head, if A and B have different accelerations, then don't you think C is going to kind of start to, to, to rotate? I think it will. So we can actually kind of uh, fix that situation by basically attaching like a device or just a a ring of some type and then connecting the ropes to that point. Now I know now we're going to start getting into angles but uh, it's not really important. For simplicity's sake let's just assume that we're not going to have the problem of different accelerations for A and B causing C to rotate. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Let's draw all the forces on this free body diagram. And let's do that in a different color. There's going to be friction here. Let's call that friction A. And there's going to be friction here. Let's call that friction B. And there's going to be a T1 here and a T2 there, which we've already got the variables written. And there's going to be now a T2 here and a T1 there. And finally, we have MCG here. Now, in this situation, this problem is quite different in the sense that the next step would usually be to decide upon a path. But how can we decide upon a path when there's obviously A and B are moving in different directions and C is moving in different directions? It's, it's very possible for us at this point. Let's change colors and say, all right, look, for A, the path is going to be like this. And then for C, the path is going to be down. And then for B, the path is going to be like this and like that. So now that's a positive path and that's a positive path. Okay? So if we now go ahead and, of course, you know, what's the procedure, right? Step number one, right? Find acceleration. 
The step number two is find the tension. So in order to find the acceleration, we need to do the sum of the forces on the system is equal to F net of the system. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got, this is negative now, so we've got negative force of friction, A. I'm not going to write the internal forces anymore. It's just, it's not necessary. So T1 cancels T1. We can forget about that. T2 cancels T2. We can forget about that. And now we've got positive MCG. And we've got, a finally, a minus force of friction B. Now I know that A and B also have normal forces and gravity as well. However, those forces do not contribute to their acceleration horizontally. So I'm going to leave them off. Now that's going to all equal the mass of the system times the acceleration. Okay. So Therefore, as you can see, we are assuming that the acceleration of all three is going to be the same. Okay. So let's go ahead and write that out. This is negative mu1 mag plus mcg minus mu2 mbg and finally, the total mass, oops, the total mass is all three of them added together. Times acceleration. Now, if we wanted to solve for the acceleration, it's pretty easy at this point. Now, I can factor out uh, a g out of here. That's about all I can factor out. So if I go g times mc minus mu1 ma minus mu2 mb uh, divided by all three masses. That's my acceleration. That's about as simple as I can get it. Let's go ahead and stick those numbers in now. 9.8 meters per second squared times mc, which is 6 kilos minus mu1, which is uh, 0.2 times a, which is 2.5. Okay, now I'm just getting these from here. Okay, and then let's go back. kilograms minus mu2, which is 0.3 times mb, which is 3.5. Okay, and let's close that up, and let's, let's divide all that by the sum of them all which is uh, 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 6 kilograms. And what do we get for our acceleration? All right, well, we've got to get our calculator. And acceleration is equal to, OK, so let's go 6, Enter. 0.2, enter 2.5 times, minus 0.3, enter 3.5 times, minus uh, 9.8 times, and then, Uh oh, I think I made a mistake here. Did I make a mistake? Let's try that again. I'm 
six enter, point two enter, two point five times minus point three enter, three point five times minus there we go, that's better. Uh nine point eight times And now 2.5, enter 3.5 plus 6 plus, divided by, getting 3.6 meters per second squared. 3.63. Okay. So now that we know the acceleration, we can now go ahead and do the calculation on the tensions. Now at this point we have a decision to make. Listen, if you choose C at this point, you know, if, if, if you go ahead and choose, C, let's use green here for this color, if you choose C, it's a mistake at this point. Why? Because you're trying to find T1 and T2. They're both unknown. But if you, if you go ahead and do the free body diagram for C, it's going to have both T1 and T2 in that equation. And so you're going to have one equation and two unknowns. You're going to get nowhere. So a simple way to do this now would just to be to pick A and B, and you'll be able to get T1 and T2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So if I, let's say, do A first. No, oh, wrong color. If I go ahead and do A, I've got T1 going this way. I've got force of friction A going that way. And of course, I do know that this way is positive. So that means my equation is uh, negative force of friction plus T1 equals MA. And so therefore, I've got negative mu1 mag plus t1 equals maa. And now solving for t1 is equal to maa plus mu1 mag. Let's factor out the ma and we get that. Now we know all the values, let's plug them in. MA is 2.5. A is, well we calculated that out to be 3.63. And mu1 is 0.2 and of course uh, G is 9.8. And that's going to give us a total of, let's find out here, uh, <coughs> 3.63.2, enter 9.8 times plus 2.5 times. I'm getting an answer of 13.99. Newtons. Okay, so that's T1. And now we do the same thing for T2. So basically, here is B. And we know that this way now is positive, right? And so it's it you know if you if you look at if you look at uh this free body diagram up here and if you look at this free body diagram down there you'll notice that it's exactly the same why because the positive direction is in the direction of the tension right and the positive direction is in the direction of the tension so in fact if i go through the free body diagram 
analysis, if I go through you know, all of this, it's going to be exactly the same. And so my final equation is going to be exactly the same as well. It's just going to be mb times a plus mu 2g. And if I plug those in, mb was 3.5. Acceleration once again is 3.63 and mu2 was 0.3. And what do we get? Well, 0.3 enter 9.8 times 3.63 plus. 3.5 times. I'm getting 22. Point, well, 22.995. Let's just say it's 23. 23 newtons. So we're done the problem. And of course, one last thing. I mean, gosh, we've done so much work at this point. Uh, a little bit more, perhaps, might be okay. But we're finished the problem. But now you see this this free body here, right? C. At this point, you could say to yourself, well, I wonder if, s if the free body diagram for C is going to work. So we could go now, we could say, all right, look, here's C. We've got T1 and T2 and MCG. Okay, now what would we be solving for? We know everything, right? But if we write down the equation, uh, which way is positive here? Down, right? Summation of the forces is equal to F net. So that means we'd have negative T1, negative T2 plus MCG is equal to MA. Let's see what we get for A. Let's just see if it works out. Okay, so that's going to be, mm, I think T1 was close to 14, okay? So if we rewrite this and solve for A, negative 14 newtons minus 23 newtons plus MCG, which is, uh, 6 kilos times 9.8 newtons per kilogram and divided by mc which is 6 what's that going to give us for a let's work it out so 14 change sign enter 23 subtract 6 enter 9.8 times plus uh, 6 divided by. And lo and behold, we get an acceleration of 3.63. <coughs> yes, we got it right. So there's a good way to, to verify that your answer is correct. Well, that's the end of this problem. Thanks for watching. <laughs>